Hi, Kevin here. Nice to see you again. Well, for a late lunch or early supper tonight, we're fixing an 18th century dish called Welsh Rabbit. What it is, is a jazzed up cheese sauce served over toasted crusty bread. And I found several recipes for Welsh Rabbit and I wanted to share uh, one backstory from the Betty Crocker picture cookbook that was published in 1950. Here we go. This is what they say about Welsh rabbit. The story goes that long ago in Wales, the peasants, not allowed to hunt on the estates of noblemen, served melted cheese as a substitute for rabbit, popular prize of the hunt. It became a famous dish at ye, ye Old Cheshire Inn, meeting place of England's illustrious penmen. There, rare wits from Ben Jonson to Charles Dickens conversed copiously while enjoying this specialty of the house. Now, there's absolutely no evidence that anything in that story is true. Um, but we do know that Welsh rabbit has been around since the 18th century or maybe even the 17th century. And I'm going to use an updated recipe today. I'm going to put the cheese and other ingredients in a bechamel. Okay, here we go. All right, here's the bread that I toasted. This is from a crusty bowl. I toasted both sides of the bread. I did this under the broiler. And here in the saucepan, I have a quarter cup, that's four tablespoons of butter that I'm melting over a medium low flame. And then to the butter, I'm going to add a quarter cup of regular all-purpose flour. Also going to add a half teaspoon of salt. some grinds of black pepper, and about a quarter teaspoon, you know, a big pinch of dry mustard. Adding mustard to Welsh rabbit definitely dates back to the 18th century. Okay, one other thing I'm going to add is a little splash of Worcestershire sauce. Just a few drops, probably a quarter teaspoon or so. And then I'm going to lower the heat and just stir this mixture until it becomes smooth and bubbly. What we're doing is cooking the raw taste of the flour out of the sauce. Okay, now we're going to add one cup of whole milk. You could use half and half if you prefer. Stir that in. Yeah, I just put this milk in the microwave on high for two minutes to get it hot. When you add hot milk to this type of sauce, the sauce tends to be very smooth. In, in other words, it doesn't have any clumps in it. We're going to stir this about for oh, just a minute, maybe less. Yeah, I don't know if you can see, but it's getting very thick. It also smells terrific because of the Worcestershire sauce. Okay, now we're going to add a half cup of ale. You could add white wine instead of the ale. And if you can't have alcohol, you could just add another half cup of milk. 
I'm going to stir this for about a minute. Actually, not even a minute. Just want this to start bubbling a little bit. Which it is going to do very quickly. Now, in my research for Welsh Rabbit, I discovered that the term was actually a put-down. In the same way that, I don't know, I, I had an Italian friend who once pointed out uh, cobwebs in my apartment in New York City, and he called them Irish curtains. So that was a put down. It was a joke, but it was a put down. So Welsh Rabbit was, I think, making fun of uh, the Welsh and their great love of toasted cheese, maybe. There is also a Scottish Rabbit, and there is an English Rabbit. And I'll talk more about these different rabbits over on my website, and I'll post a link to my website in the description box below. Okay, we are at a bubble now, so I'm going to add one cup of sharp cheddar cheese, shredded cheddar cheese. Lower the heat, and then just stir this briefly until all of the cheese melts. Yeah, the English rabbit took the toasted bread and then uh, you pour red wine over the bread and then you add the cheese. That sounds very delicious indeed. Okay. And these variations on Welsh, Scottish, and English rabbit were published in a cookbook by Hannah Gloss uh, in 1827. She published a book called The Art of Cookery, and she included all of these different rabbits. It's very interesting. I might like to try the one where you pour red wine over the toasted bread. Okay, this is ready. Okay. So I'm going to plate this up and then I'll show you what it looks like on the plate. All right. Now from what I gather, you don't want the cheese sauce to drizzle over the sides of the bread. You want it to be perfectly on top like this so you can see the edge of the bread. And then what you can do is garnish it with a little paprika. Okay, let me give you a close-up. Here's my serving. I'm having this with baby spinach leaves and some fresh tomato from my garden. Here's your serving. Of course, now I have to have a little taste of this. Here's the taste. Okay. This is very good. Let me zoom you in a little. I think I want another taste. Yeah, you definitely want to use a country type bread, a crusty bread. Very nice. I can taste the Worcestershire, and I can taste just a little hint of the ale. Let me move this up so I can talk with you. 
Yeah, so this is my first time making and tasting Welsh Rabbit. I think it's very good. Tastes like, you know, decent quality pub food. Perfect for lunch or supper. And I also wanted to tell you about some other variations on this dish, which date back to the 18th century. So if you put an egg on top of Welsh Rabbit, it becomes a golden buck. Uh, Welsh rabbit blended with tomato or tomato soup is called a blushing bunny. Tomatoes are in season, so you like, may like to make yourself a blushing bunny for lunch someday. Anyway, I hope you'll try this dish or one of its multiple variations. Again, I think it's very good. And thanks so much for watching. I will post the list of ingredients in the description box below. And I'll have some more information over on my website. Okay, again, thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, probably tomorrow. Bye for now. Okay, I'm back already. I was getting ready to load this video onto YouTube and I suddenly realized I gave you the wrong date for one of the cookbooks. Um, the Art of Cookery, which was written by Hannah Gloss, uh, in which Scotch Rabbit and Welsh Rabbit and English Rabbit are mentioned, was published not in 1827, but in 1727. So I was off by 100 years. Anyway, I just wanted to make that correction. Also, if you are from Wales, or if you are of Welsh descent, please let me know what your take is on Welsh Rabbit. All right, see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.